that's the last time this car is gonna run on DJet. All right, guys, today on the Beerford Garage, we're starting the biggest and most ambitious project we've ever taken, aside from maybe the naughty truck. We are going to take this 72 914 that has a 73 2 liter D jet in it, and we're going to do a D jet delete. We are going to take this engine from the 70s up to current time. So we are about to pull apart the fuel injection system. We are gonna be replacing it with some modern components. We're using a few of the older components and trying to bring this up into a modern standard. So this video is just gonna be a quick overview of the project of what's coming. It's gonna be lots of different segments. And so we'll get into the specifics about the parts and the step-by-step -step and the tuning and all the things you need to know. But really this video is about why we're doing this. So let's take a look at the D-Jet motor and talk a little bit about what I don't like and what I'm hoping to fix. Welcome to the maze that is a D-Jet fuel injection system. Notice how I don't say electronic fuel injection because the amount of computing power in here is far less than most of us have in an alarm clock at our house. So the reason we are starting this is to bring the 914 up into a much more modern set of standards and to eliminate some of these components MPS, weird distributor that is unobtainium, and a maze of vacuum lines, and bring it into something that is hopefully a little more usable and a little more reasonable in a modern perspective. So um, this car has had a 1.7 single car. It has had this two liter DJ motor, which worked really well for the first couple of years. And then it has recently started giving me a lot more problems uh, from a fuel injection perspective. It's had some hot start issues. It's had some issues with um, restarting after hot. Uh, it's had a little bit of an idle quality issue. It'll idle it. 2000, it'll idle at 800. It just kind of makes its mind up as it goes. So as far as smooth and running drivability, my MPS works. It passes both resistance tests and the vacuum tests. So as best I can tell without a machine that no one has, it is tuned, uh, but it really serves more or less like a light switch. If you are light on the throttle or off the throttle deceleration, the air fuel gauge reads 22 to one. If you tip into the throttle a little bit or you shift down a gear to kind of accelerate, it goes ping, eight to one. So it's kind of a all fuel or no fuel. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of fuel control there. And that's the biggest thing I'm looking for. Uh, it runs pig fat rich or super, super dangerous lean. Uh, so the big question is what are we doing for fuel control? And I'm happy to say that we're going with an Haltech Elite 550. I'm a big fan of Mighty Car Mods. That's the only reason I even know about Haltech. But the biggest thing about Haltech over a micro squirt or some of those other things is that it has the ability to drive these stock style injectors, which I intend to retain. My goal with this was to spend less than an off the shelf EFI kit, retain what parts I've already spent money on or have already put some time into, like those injectors that have already been to Mr. Injector. They have more than enough uh, flow for the type of horsepower I'm trying to make. And so I wanna retain as much of that as I can. So we'll be adding and changing some sensors. The main function though, we'll be changing the computing power of the system. I do already have an Innovate O2 sensor installed with a wide band. So we're gonna use that to feed a zero to five volt to the ECU to control some self-learning some closed loop stuff so we don't have to just run in an open loop fashion. So that is the main reason we're starting to go down this project. The other reason is these cars came fuel injected and I just believe that they need fuel injection. And I feel like carburetors is an easier way. It's a simpler way, but uh, it's also become a challenge to myself. I have never tuned fuel injection. I don't never really owned a car uh, that wasn't diesel that was new enough to need that, but I'm now gonna teach myself that and I want to learn tuning. So I'm gonna seek some help. I've already made a contact with somebody that's running a Haltech on a VW type one. I know that there's a type four out there running it in a bus, same motor as this. 
And so I am going to use some resources, uh, possibly use somebody for some remote or dyno tuning, but I'm going to try to do as much of that as I can myself. So I have the ability to make changes on the fly if we go to um, you know, a higher elevation or anything like that. But generally, the computer is going to do most of that work for us. So that is the main reason we're doing this, and I think that's going to get us started with this project. The next step is we're going to take out anything that's not being used. We're going to look at the new components, and we're going to take a look at any components we will be reusing, which is quite a few. So my goal here is to remove the DJ components that are archaic, keep the ones that are reasonable, and move forward with a modern, programmable, standalone fuel injection system with Haltech. You know, the other reason that I want to go down this road with a Haltech with a modern programmable fuel injection is it has the ability to grow. If I step up to, don't say it, water-cooled motor, or I step up to stack injection, or I build a 2.4, or I build a big boy type 4 motor, all I have to do is change some injectors and do a couple taps of the keyboard and it can accommodate that. So big cam, big bore, high rev, big stroke, anything that I want to do to this platform within the reasonable limits of four cylinder, I think this computer is primarily designed for four cylinders, four ignition outputs, four injector outputs. Um, it's gonna run great and I'm gonna be able to use that for future upgrades to the car. So I'm kind of building in some upgrade ability while I am doing it on the cheap now and trying to keep it as budget friendly as possible. Uh, it is something that I know I built some capacity in for myself later. So if this motor doesn't ever have enough stink, we can go and put some big cylinders and a stroker kit in it and we'll have the ability to uh, just turn it up from the computer. So I'm really excited about that. I'm a little nervous about that because my car does run, I can drive it and it does work. But I want that repeatability, turn of the key, the ability Ability to make tuning changes and the ability to upgrade with something a little bit more modern so tech has come a long way in the 50 years since the 914 has come out and I'm excited to use something modern uh, totally controllable and really really awesome so all right guys that is just a short intro to this project there is a lot more to come my goal is to have this running by the works reunion which is going to be the new date for 2021 in May I hope it happens if it doesn't happen We'll have it running for uh, some of the other events over the summer. So uh, I've got some time. I have a lot of other projects kind of on the back burner. No big gambler builds, no major motorcycle rebuilds coming right now. So that is the goal. It is the end of February. So I've got about three months, two and a half months to put this together. And if I make it great, if I don't, no problem. I'm not driving this car a ton in the summer. So stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage. We will have 914 updates periodically. Can't promise it'll be every video, but we'll try and get you guys at least two 914 videos on my 914 each month. So stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks on Instagram. Drop us a comment and let us know what you know about fuel injection, what you know about carburetors, and what you would like to have in your 914 below. See ya.